Hey, Tiffany. Did you get home okay? Hi, Justin. Yeah, I just got here. I'm sorry I couldn't take you home myself. I had to drive my mom and sister to their place. That's fine. I understand. I feel terrible about today. You must have been so uncomfortable. My mom and sister are not usually like that, but I guess they're sad to see me getting married and leaving home. I apologize for them. I hope they didn't offend you in any way. You don't have to apologize. I know how they must feel. I wasn't too bothered. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. You're the only man in the family. But now you're getting married and moving out, so they must be feeling blue. I'm glad to hear that. I was really worried that you were upset, but I still feel like I owe you an apology. I told you, it's okay. You don't have to worry about it. You know, I don't hold grudges. I'm fine, so stop saying sorry. I appreciate you coming today. It was a lot farther from your house than it should have been. Quite a trip. I'm thankful for the fruit basket too. My mom loved it. Don't mention it. Thank you for arranging the dinner. So, now we're getting ready for the wedding for real, right? It's going to be crazy. We have to find a venue and everything. First things first, we need to talk about where we're going to live. We have a lot of other things to discuss after that. Yeah, but I think I'll buy a new house for us. It'll be a place for our future. But my darling, are you truly certain it is alright? The more I think about it, the more I feel like it's excessively extravagant. Hey, it's only a home for the two of us. It's not excessively lavish or anything. I'm not acquiring a commercial office in the midst of New York City. I mean, I am so apologetic and mortified to your parents. Grooms customarily procure a house, and here you are. A bride procuring one for both of us. Are you truly certain that your parents agree with that? My parents were the ones who initiated it first. They always desired to purchase me a house when I got married. I'm not the one who requested it. So we should be thankful for it and receive it. You know, we still have to remit for the mortgage. Even though it will not be a lot, right? They deposited more than 70%. So monthly remittances should be effortlessly manageable. We should work hard to pay it off though, okay? Thank you immensely. You know what? I should procure the furniture then. What do we require specifically? We need all the fundamentals. We need a TV, couch, bed, and rice cooker to start. We don't need fancy ones, just the ones with a normal price and specification. Wow, I am the most fortunate guy in the world who is getting married to the most gorgeous, kind, caring, and intelligent girl. I cannot request for more. How in the world am I marrying a girl like you? There is no one like you in this whole extensive world. You know, I heard a lot of people cannot arrive at an accord for the wedding and the furniture. Some of my friends ended up terminating their engagement because they discerned that they are so dissimilar from their fiancés and they felt like they will not ever be able to reconcile with each other. Usually a bride-to-be wants fancy and costly stuff. But you are a shrewd girl asking to get a rational one. This is one of the many reasons why I adore you. I think you are overstating. The cost of venues has gone up lately, so we should select it cautiously and scrutinize every inch of it. Absolutely. We will be almost done with getting ready for the wedding after we decide on the venue. I am pleased things are getting ready. Easier than I anticipated, because I thought it might take a while to do everything. I know I did not expect my parents to buy us the house so amiably. I will be a good husband to you and a good son-in-law to your parents. I cannot thank them enough. I will have to be good to you too. We should respect each other in a marriage. Not just one way. Anyway, we can end it here for now and let us go to sleep. We can search for the venues tomorrow and make a reservation right away if we find the one we like. Sounds like a plan. It is so late already. Have sweet dreams. You too. Sleep tight. See you tomorrow. Hi, Tiffany. 
Do you have a second? Who is this? Ouch. She forgot me already. It's me, Paula Barnes. Paula Barnes. Oh, Justin's little sister. How are you? How did you get my number? I don't think we exchanged numbers the other day. I asked Justin for your number because I wanted to ask you something. It's not like you're upset that I asked for your number, right? Of course not. Why would I be upset? We're going to be family soon. What was that you wanted to ask me about? Great. I'm asking this after thinking about it for so long. I'm anxious to know. You said you lived in Europe for a long time, right? Yes, that's right. So, I guess you had a lot of European boyfriends. Um, why do you ask? I heard you lived in Paris for about 15 years, so I thought you must have dated a lot of French guys. I'm sure guys won't leave you alone. You know, thanks to your pretty face. How many French guys have you dated? Were they French only or other Europeans? Like Italian and British? Oh, you're anxious to know that kind of stuff? I'm sorry. I don't know what to say. Damn, you must have dated a dozen of them. Since you're not telling me, I'm not going to tell Justin or my mom. We're in the same age group and I totally understand about your ex-boyfriends and love life. There's nothing to hide, is there? Listen, I'm not trying to hide anything. I just don't want to talk about it. I believe it's none of your business. Frankly, I had no time for boyfriends. I was focused on my studies. I went to Paris to study fashion, and the fashion industry is very competitive. I needed to focus on my studies to not get behind, and I couldn't afford to have a boyfriend. You're a liar. <laughs> I have a feeling that you are a party girl. I saw in movies that the French have hot parties every weekend. They drink, smoke, sleep around and whatnot. So hot, right? That's what happens in the movies. Yet the reality is very different. I didn't party at all, and I never had a French or European boyfriend. Is that so? I believe you. <laughs> okay, hopefully you don't ask me such a personal question ever again. It's pretty unpleasant and uncomfortable. Hey, I was just playing. You don't have to be so sensitive about it. You're making me uncomfortable as you're being so sensitive about it. Then help yourself and don't ask me about it ever again. You should consider how I feel when you ask me questions like that. Why should I worry about your feelings when I want to know what I want to know? How would you feel if I asked you the same question? Would you gladly answer my question? Jeez. Okay, I got it. I apologize, so you can stop now. You don't have anything more to ask, do you? I'm kind of in the middle of something right now. Nope. I think I got the answer to what I wanted to know. Okay. Then I'm going back to work. I'll see you at the wedding. Hey, where have you been? You're back from your honeymoon, right? Hi, Jane. We just got home about half an hour ago. What? Half an hour ago? And you didn't call me as soon as you stepped in the door? How could you? Oh, I'm sorry. It was such a mess. We had to unpack and tidy up everything. You know how it is. No, I don't know how it is. You and Justin are so disrespectful to your parents. You don't care about us at all. I'm sorry, Jane. I didn't mean to upset you. I'll call you more often, I promise. Please, don't be angry. Fine, I'll let it slide this time. But listen, are you busy tomorrow? I was thinking of dropping by and seeing you two. Tomorrow? Um, can we do it next weekend instead? If you're not too busy then. Next weekend? What's wrong with tomorrow? Do you have something planned? No, nothing planned. It's just that we're exhausted from the trip. We need to rest and recover before we go back to work on Monday. Oh please, Justin never gets tired. He can stay up all night and still be fresh as a daisy. Are you trying to avoid me? Is that it? You don't want your mother-in-law to bother you? Of course not. 
Why would you say that? You know I love you, Jane. I'm always happy to see you. It's just that next weekend would be more convenient than tomorrow. Well, too bad. I'm coming over tomorrow for dinner and I'm staying the night. I want to see the house that your parents bought for you and my son. It is nice. Well, our house is not that big, so don't expect too much. But if you want to come over, you're always welcome. You're coming alone, right? No way. I'm bringing Paula with me. Why would I leave her out when I'm going to her brother's house? She's dying to see you guys. It'll be a great chance for you two to bond. Oh, okay. Then please let me know when you're on your way. Why should I let you know? It's my son's house. I can come and go as I please. But fine, I'll text you tomorrow. And one more thing, Paula and I are allergic to shellfish, so don't even think about cooking anything with shellfish. You can make us a nice ribeye steak instead. Well, I was actually thinking of ordering something instead of cooking. How does that sound? What? Order something? Are you kidding me? You have the nerve to order something when it's your mother-in-law's first visit to your home after your wedding? You should have some respect and cook something yourself. And don't you dare get something from somewhere and pretend you made it. I'll know right away. I have to clean the house and get ready for you guys. There might not be enough time to go shopping and cook myself. I don't care how you do it. Just do it. And make sure you cook the food yourself. And don't ask Justin to help you. He's never set foot in the kitchen in his life. Oh, well... Yes, ma'am. That's better. See you tomorrow. Oh wait, Justin just sent me the images of your house. Oh my god, your house was indeed very cramped. I thought it would be at least as big as my house. I was looking forward to seeing what kind of house my son got to live in, and it was utterly disappointing. Excuse me? A 1400 square foot house is actually spacious for us, since there's only two of us with no kids. It should have been more than 2000 square feet. My Justin hates it when it's not spacious enough. He might have not mentioned it to you, but he should feel uncomfortable. Justin is very comfortable. Every day he goes to sleep right at the moment he lays down. Are you talking back to me right now? You're very rude, aren't you? I thought you're from a wealthy family, so your parents got you something like a 3,000 square foot house in Beverly Hills. But it wasn't even close to that. It was worthless. I was a fool to expect something better than this. I'm sorry. I don't make as much to afford the one you mentioned. I didn't like you the moment I met you, and you're still that girl I didn't like even after you got married to my son. I'm not going to visit you guys anymore. I understand it should be the right thing to do. Not to come to our place anymore if you feel uncomfortable. Let us know when you miss Justin. We'd rather go to your place. Look at you talking back to me again. Fine, I got it. I don't care if you come or go. Just don't talk to me anymore. Talking to you makes me very exhausted. You won't be able to hear from me from this point on. Honey, guess what? What is this? What does it look like? It's an ultrasound. I went to the doctor today and I'm pregnant. 12 weeks along. My period has been irregular, so I didn't realize it until now. Oh, well, congrats. That's it? That's all you have to say? This is your baby, the one you've been dreaming of since we got married. You sound like you couldn't care less. Aren't you excited? Aren't you happy? I thought you'd be over the moon to be a dad. Sure, I'm thrilled. But I'm kind of busy right now. I'll call you later, okay? Fine. But you said that yesterday, too. And you never called. Oh, did I? I guess I forgot. What's wrong with you lately? You forget everything. I'm lucky you remember who I am. You come home every night looking like a zombie. Is something going on at work? Are they cutting jobs or something? No, nothing like that. Then what is it? Are you mad at me? If you are, you need to tell me why. I can't read your mind, you know. I'm not mad at you. There's nothing for you to worry about. Just leave me alone, will you? I don't get it. Why aren't you happy about this? You've been praying for a baby for so long. It's all you ever talked about. Don't you think you can handle it? It's not that. 
It's just hard to believe that I'm going to be a dad. It's weird to think that someone will call me dad instead of Justin Barnes. That makes no sense. You'll still be Justin Barnes, with or without the baby. Enough, just stop. This is how I feel, and you can't change that. And I'm swamped with work. And I hate texting you at work. Don't text me or call me when I'm working. You know, people are losing their jobs left and right, even at big companies like Google and Meta. And now we have a baby on the way. I can't afford to lose my job because I'm too busy chatting with my wife. You've always been at risk of losing your job, and you never cared before. You know what? Fine, I won't text you. Hey Tiffany, I heard the news. You're pregnant, right? Yeah, Justin told you, right? I'm pregnant, 12 weeks along. Oh really? That's hilarious! What's so funny? Nothing. It's just funny that you're clueless about everything. I can't stop laughing. <laughs> what do you mean? Clueless about what? What are you talking about? Nothing important. By the way, do you know the gender? Is it a boy or a girl? Not yet. They can't tell until later, around 17 weeks or so. Well, whatever it is. I pity the poor thing. <laughs> You're making no sense. What are you trying to say? Is there something I should know? You have to tell me. I can't figure it out if you don't talk to me. You wouldn't understand even if I told you. Maybe you don't want to know. You should find out for yourself what I'm talking about. Justin knows. Poor Tiffany. So naive. <laughs> I'm so happy for you. Congrats! Jane? Paula? Say something. I'm impressed. I thought it'll take some time until you find it out. But here you are asking about it. You're smarter than I thought. Good job. <laughs> okay, I heard it from Justin. Don't you think you're going too far, though? What do you mean? You've lived in Europe for about 15 years, and you should be able to understand him. What does that have to do with this? Listen, I heard it's pretty common that people cheat on each other and see multiple girls and guys at the same time in European culture. I'm sure you would be familiar with that culture, so I don't understand why you're making such a big deal out of it. You should have done it yourself, too. Are you saying you can do it? But my son can't? Is it a lie that you lived in Paris? You wouldn't be so mad about it if you actually lived there and experienced the culture. This conversation is such a waste of time. But, for the record, I didn't lie about it. And I actually lived in Paris. And am I obligated to forgive him just because I lived in Paris, where people have free love lives? That's so funny. I was the one who introduced Lily to Justin. I guess you didn't mention that part. What did you say? Lily is one of my closest friends. <laughs> one day I was having lunch with Justin and she just stopped by as she was close by. She fell in love with Justin at first sight and she asked me to introduce him to her. You know what's funny? Justin was delighted to be introduced to Lily. I'm sure you don't know about this but he has been complaining about you and your attitude. Only after a few weeks, he was married. He was so tired of you, and he needed something to make him happy again. Still, he's married. Why would she love a married man? Well, Lily knew that Justin was married, but she still had feelings for him. And he liked her too. They knew they will be caught someday, eventually, Yet they still didn't care much about it. They said something about how you're not worthy enough to be worried about. I think the timing is unfortunate that you realized it when you're pregnant. All of you knew about it, and I was the only one who didn't know about it? You did all this behind my back. Having fun. Stop it. I thought I would be happy to be married to you in the beginning, but you were problematic and annoying as time went on. 
I was so tired to see you always arguing with my mom and Paula, so I needed a break. I wanted to see a pretty girl who was in her 20s, and it was indeed refreshing and thrilling. Why would I say no when someone like Lily loves me? I'm not interested in your love life. I don't want to hear one more thing about it. I'm not saying this twice. What are you going to do with your baby that I'm pregnant with? Get an abortion. What the hell did you say? I said get an abortion. I don't want that damn baby. Things are so twisted and you ended up having my baby. But I didn't want to have a baby with you to begin with. That's absurd. You were desperate for a baby. I don't care. I'm breaking up with you now. You know everything. We can't continue this marriage. I don't want to breathe under the same roof as you. And I'm sure you don't want that either. I don't want to live with a woman I don't even love anymore just because we're baby's mom and dad. It's not ideal for the baby either. Let's get a divorce. The sooner the better. I wouldn't have married you if I had any idea that you're such a horrible person. Not to mention your pathetic family. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree, does it? I regret it so much that I want to turn back time if I can. On the bright side, I should say better late than never to realize what kind of person you are. I think God gave me a chance to run away from such a horrendous family. Yeah, you can babble all you want. I feel bad about you being kicked out like this. But hey, you should say it correctly. God gave my brother a chance to run away from a horrendous woman like you. Shut the hell up. You stupid witch. You, your mom, and your brother make me sick. You should all go to hell. What did you just say? You need to apologize right now. Sure. If you want to get a divorce, I will get a divorce. But I'm going to file for alimony and try and sue for anything I can. I'll make sure Lily is labeled as a mistress who broke someone's family and make her pay for it for the rest of her life. I'm going to have this baby and sue for custody as well. Be prepared for it. And Paula... You stupid rat. I'm the one who needs an apology from all of you. But it's not even worth it. And I don't want to talk to you trash for any more moments. So shut up and piss off. Sure. Do whatever you want to do. <laughs> Are you serious? You said it yourself, right? You know I'm going to do it if I say I'm going to do it. I'm a very determined person. Ouch. We're not scared at all. How dare you try to threaten us with your shallow words? Hey, you failed at raising kids, didn't you? It's so hilarious that both of your children are even dirtier than garbage. What did you say? You only have two of them. And both of them are not even close to being decent human beings. You should be disappointed but I see that they are what you made them. I'm curious how your life will be when you're so old and lying on your bed that you can do nothing but wait to be dead. Well, I'm going to get going now. I'll be out of your life, but not gently. I wish you a terrible life with that young bitch for the rest of your life. You're such a slut. Hey, Tiffany. How are you? Who's this? It's me, Justin, your ex-husband. How have you been? I've been thinking about you a lot. How come you never call me? Oh, the notorious Justin Barnes. I was having a great day, and you had to ruin it. I had erased you from my memory, and you had to remind me of who you are. <sighs> now I feel sick. That's pretty harsh, don't you think? Why did you text me? Listen, Tiffany, I know I'm a jerk who doesn't deserve your forgiveness, but can you please forgive me just this once? I don't know what came over me. I owe you a huge apology. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. My stomach hurts from laughing so hard. Are you drunk? High on drugs? Or did you lose your mind? 
Did you forget why we got divorced? You dumped me for some other bitches. That's how our relationship ended. And now you're asking me for forgiveness? Please help me. We lost everything in a scam. My whole family is about to be homeless. Can you please give me back our house? Our house? You mean the one your mom kept nagging about how small it was, right? Well, I sold that house and moved away a long time ago. And in case you forgot, my parents bought me that house. How dare you ask me to give it to you? Oh, please. You're the only one who can help me. You're the only one I can trust. What are you talking about? You should talk to your mistress, not me. By the way, did you pay the child support for this month? I'm begging you like this because I don't have that money. Like I said, I'm about to be kicked out on the street and I can't even afford a sandwich. So if you can help me out this one time, I'd really appreciate it. Give me a break. I couldn't care less if you end up on the street or under a bus. You should get a job cleaning up dog shit in the park. That would be perfect for someone like you. You're nothing to me. And I don't want to waste another second talking to you. You're absolutely worthless and dead to me. I'm telling you again, pay the child support on time. Or you'll end up in jail. I'm blocking you from now on. So don't bother to call or text me. Justin was such a scumbag who left me and my daughter to be with his mistress after I got a divorce. I didn't give up, but had my daughter and raised her to my best. Now I'm learning about management at my parents' company. And I'm expanding it inch by inch with a guy who still loved me as I was, even by knowing what I went through. I heard my ex-husband's family lost everything to an investment fraud. And also... He ended up in jail because he failed to pay me child support on a timely manner. He was freed after he had negotiated to pay me $1,500 a month. I'm planning to live happily ever after with my daughter, without things that cause me a headache. I'm looking forward to a happy life 